Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, let's talk about some tips, tricks, hacks, bodges, whatever terms you want to use for them. We got 10 and a half of them for you. Hopefully, you like it. You might know some, but I want you guys to enjoy it either way. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, I'm glad you're here. If it's your first time, have a look around. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it is uh, better than a cat video. We do everything uh, business related. I'll never show you how to do squeegeeing itself, but everything else, you'll definitely uh, maybe pick up a thing or two. Maybe. My mom said it's the best window cleaning show on the internet, so, you know. No, uh, thank you. Have a look around, like I said. But if you are one of the cool kids, if you're somebody who watches every episode, if you comment on every YouTube video, you give me the thumbs up on every video, you've left a review, but more importantly, shameless plug, more importantly, you buy all your supplies through me. Well, thanks. It is because of you that uh, I get brand name hair gel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Um, it doesn't take you, it doesn't cost you any extra. I don't think it takes you any extra time either. But uh, those of you who always put orders in through me, put it in your cart, text me and be like, yo, Jersey, what's up? My cart is good. Put it in. I verify your address, the total, and that's it. It's good to go, man. Uh, it is because of you that I get to make money and live and eat and feed my family. So thank you very, very, very much. I know uh, some of you are super, super dedicated to letting me put on order. So thank you. Virtual high five. And if this COVID crap ever goes away, I would love to give you an in-person high five as a, a, a simple thank you. But if you want to uh, let me put your orders in, my number is 862 312 Two zero two six. I'm almost out of hair gel, so I hope you put your orders in through me. Shameless plug over. Uh, I do want to give a couple quick shout outs. I want to say what's up to Louis Guevara. Hopefully I didn't put your name. Uh, Leonard Drummond from Pyramid Window Cleaning. Uh, Chris Chambers, uh, one of the cool kids for sure. Uh, Cameron Clark and the new king of binge. Jay Morgan from the UK. Jay doesn't even own a window cleaning business anymore, but he has now watched every single episode of WCR Nation, and it took him four weeks. Mind you, there is 180 episodes. <laughs> That's 90 hours of content. That's a lot of content. I'm so sorry for uh, all the times that I sniffled or said the word um in your ear but anyway jay uh i just want to do this you are the new king of binge thank you so much for checking us out um either way thank you thank you thank you but today we're talking about the top eh, 10 and a half tricks i love trips and tricks i love them so much and here's why when you find out some little thing you're like why did i not think of that it is such like a mindgasm, right? Your brain just explodes and you're like, that is such an awesome, awesome, awesome idea. It just is. It's one of those things that I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's the little things in life. So hopefully you get something out of this. But more importantly, if you're watching this on YouTube, put in the bottom. Right now, comment down below. Tell me what your best tips and tricks are. Give me your top three. Uh, do definitely put them in there. Uh, that conversation helps for SEO. I love talking to people. Yeah, put it in there. Hopefully, everybody else can learn from your little tips and tricks. And your tips and tricks are probably better than mine. But I do got 10 and a half of them for you today because I wanted to be different. So there's like a half a tip. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the number 10 tip that uh, I love Love, love, love is steel wool. Now, I know a lot of you know about steel wool. You know about bronze wool. You use it for everything. But here's the thing. 
using it dry after the window does not create an extra step. Here's the thing. If you're going to use steel wool, you have to use 4-0 or 4-aught, right? 0 0 0 0 steel wool. Now, it's so cheap. Every job, every day, we rip a half a pillow and you keep it in. I use an Ederay pouch. A uh, scraper pouch has two little holsters. One, I always put my steel wool in. Using a pouch with steel wool makes it so that the speakers in your phone don't pick up all the little rusty bits that are in your pocket. If you use your pocket, and I accidentally have put it in pockets of hoodies like this before, and uh, all those little rusty bits get stuck in the speaker uh, magnets on your phone, and it sucks. But steel wool is awesome. Here's the thing. If you use it wet, it's going to go garbage pretty darn quick. A lot of times on really, really gnarly windows, I'm going to wet the window with my scrubber, hit it all with steel wool while it's wet, and then squeegee it off. It turns out awesome, but you still have to go back with a dry piece. The thing is, for most things, keep that steel wool dry. Do the whole window, scrub it, squeegee, then dry buff with the steel wool. It takes off fingerprints, bug butts, anything that's left on the glass. It's super fast to get off even like a piece of artillery fungus. One, two, three. You're good to go. Steel wool is awesome. If you haven't tried it or use it, again, 4-0. Do not let it rust. If there's any rust on steel wool, it will scratch glass. If you know anything about the uh, scratch density, or uh, not density, I should say material density, um, tests, rust is harder than glass, and it will win. And by the way, just for nerd information, if you ever wonder if something scratches glass, it's like a diamond cutting a diamond. The only thing that cuts a diamond is a diamond, right? So if you have two things of the same hardness, they will scratch each other. So if you have like a glass fine, uh, which is a sliver of glass that's left on tempered glass, fabricating debris, that pushed up against glass will scratch something. The flat glass will scratch this, the little sliver or the sliver will scratch the glass. That's how that works. But if you take a towel, a towel can't scratch glass. Glass is super, super dense. Same thing with steel wool. The fibers are so soft in steel wool, it cannot scratch glass. Now, tint and stuff, I know somebody's going to be like, tint. tint's different. Tint, you have to just be careful with tint. But anyway, that's the number 10 uh, tip. Steel wool, it is awesome, and it's super, super cheap. Number 9 is PVC poles in your van for poles. PVC tubes for poles. Yeah, there you go. Now, here's one thing. You probably have poles lying around. You maybe got them in the back of your truck. Maybe you got them laying anywhere. They're going to get bent, damaged. They're just going to fly around. We use PVC tubes for all of that. I have a closed-end PVC. So the longest pole that we have will fit in a six-foot section of pole. Now... To get poles out of that, I have a piece of foam at the very back of the tube that fits in there. There is a board on the other side of that foam, and then a string or rope through that little thing. It's the same size diameter as the tube. So you put all your poles in there, big or small, it doesn't matter, and the rope runs from the front and out uh, from the back, out the front, or into the cap that screws on. So anytime you want to pull, when you open that up, you unscrew it, and the cap will stay there because it's being held by the, the rope. You can pull your poles out. Now, for little ones, you just pull that cap, and it pulls the entire uh, circle of foam to the front, which pulls all your poles forward. So now you can keep all your poles together in one piece of PVC. You're never going to lose poles. They're never going to fall out. And then that little piece of foam stops it, so if you slam on your brakes or things, it kind of cushions it. So... Very, very simple to make. Uh, it is just a piece of foam, a piece of wood, and a rope. The same diameter as the inside of the tube. Push to the back of the tube. All your poles go in front. Put on a fitting on the front where you can screw it in so everything is secure. Super easy. You can actually do this in the exterior. I have uh, them on my ladder racks on exterior portions. And then I also have them mounted inside of caps. So if you have a van, that same thing can be done and uh, yeah, it's always nice to have poles in a certain area. They don't get beat up when they're kind of held. And when you're throwing your buckets and stuff in them, you're not damaging those poles. So very, very cool idea. Super simple to make. Um, if you make it, take pictures of it. I should have prepped better and had pictures of all this stuff. But yeah, you get the idea. Do it. I'm telling you, it's uh, like a 
Saturday morning job that you can do in like 10, 15 minutes, and it's super, super awesome. Plus, because the cap is on, you'll never lose the cap or set it down somewhere because it's connected. Huh? It's a, a really good trick. Uh, number eight is a weird one because I have a guy who does this uh, and he will never take his boots off. But it's wearing boots as opposed to tennis shoes. Now, most of us, we want nice lights. We think about going in houses if you're taking shoes off. Switch to booties if you're using boots. But wearing a boot, a hard bottom boot, I run cat boots, uh, the ones that I like. When you have a stiff bottom, when you're on a ladder, your, your foot actually sits on the boot. As opposed to a tennis shoe, your foot kind of bends and you get fatigue. You get uh, strain in your feet. It's super uncomfortable. And it just does not feel great if you're using any type of ladders. The other thing with boots, work boots of anything else, is you can actually have taller boots. So if you are going into bushes or climbing around on people's you know, properties, you're not going to get all that stuff inside your shoes. Now, switching that over, wearing booties inside a house is uh, kind of necessary because you don't want to be unlacing a big 12 eyelet boot or something every single time. Um Booties are pretty good for that. Now, the boot thing in general, I know some people have, uh, let's just say, uh, fragrant feet. Uh, if you, if that's you, as I just spit here, but if that's you, um, then, uh, yeah, reevaluate taking them off. Because after a day of work, it uh, smells like you were wore, wearing boots all day. But boots, huge. They're also good for dew on grass. So a lot of times your boots are going to be um, waterproof or water resistant. When you're walking through grass that's still dewy, you're not soaking your shoes like you would with tennis shoes. And uh, I'd like it to just feel like it makes you a little bit more professional, maybe. I don't know. That last one is just me babbling. But anyway, uh, boots are super, super awesome. Again, ladder fatigue. If you're still using ladders or any of that, it makes the world of difference. The world of difference. Um, number seven in the top ten and a half tips and tricks. These are real quick, by the way. They're little ones. I didn't want like big in-depth things. These are just quick. But if you're in a cold area that gets below freezing, you're still going to clean. And a lot of times people are using uh, solutions in the water. And a lot of you don't even know what solutions to use. Go with a regular blue windshield washer fluid. Super simple. It's like a buck ninety nine at the store. If you run out on the way to a job, buy a four pack. That mixed 50-50 with water and a normal size dollop of soap. So if you're using soap in your water, uh, make sure that you're not using a ton, less than you think, but do the same thing in with windshield washer fluid. That gets you down to about um, zero to 10 degrees is usually where that can get when you're 50-50. If you need more, mix more. But I always say at 50-50, if it's freezing, I'll pull the guys out of the field. Like you guys don't need to be cleaning if it's zero. It just, it doesn't make sense. But windshield washer fluid is not awesome for you. So my Seaway A is uh, to wear your protective equipment, gloves and things like that. But you know how when we work, it just doesn't necessarily work out that way. Some of you are out there wearing neoprene gloves, which are awesome little hand warmer things if you don't mind the smell of a swamp every time you take the things off. Uh, that is protective enough for uh, windshield washer fluid. But I'm a nobody, so I don't know. Maybe I'm giving you bad advice health-wise. I don't know. <laughs> Consult a physician before using any of the... Yeah, there you go. But windshield washer fluid. Um, I know people who use methanol also. The problem with that is it has to be grounded. If you are using methanol and it's in a facility, it needs to be off the ground... It needs to be in a static-free uh, skid, and it needs to be grounded. The thing has to be grounded because you have a just giant jug of alcohol. Like, that will explode. Will explode with static. Like, it is just like a drum of, of explosiveness. So make sure that you're being cautious if you're using that. If you go with the windshield washer fluid, you don't have those issues. You just don't. 
Uh, don't get the fancy like super zero degree. Like remember, we're still putting it on the glass and taking it off. Windshield washer fluid does leave a little bit kind of a kind of a residue, but it's not that bad. And it just has to get us through the winter months, which by the way, this year, winter is going to suck. Uh, places have already gotten so much snow and it's been so cold that it's going to be a rough winter. You can mark this. I'm telling you now, the winter of 2020 slash 2021 is going to be cold and snowy and sucky. Because why not? 2020 has sucked donkey this far anyway. So anyway, uh, windshield washer fluid. It's awesome. Uh, the number six on our list is probably one of the biggest game changers that I went through also as far as just simple tricks. Like I love just a simple, like what, why didn't I think of that? And here's the thing. Are you tired of uh, wet towels? By the way, should I re-say that? <clears throat> Are you tired of wet towels on your shoulder? Like it sounds like an infomercial, right? But I, yeah, if you're tired of wet towels and using up a bunch of them, because we always have in our trucks a dry bin and a wet bin, when you detail, 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 and it starts leaving marks, then it switches shoulders to our wet shoulder. That's how we used to do it. Now, we use what's called a natural sea sponge. Now, yes, we sell them, and I think you can get them anywhere, but a natural sponge, it's just this ball sponge that you find in the ocean. But what you do is you always have that on you in your pouch. So you have your dry towel for detailing and then for all your sills, instead of taking a old squeegee and wiping it off or taking your towel and wiping it and soaking up all that water, you use a sponge. Sponges are super absorbent, ridiculously absorbent. So you have that sponge, you take all that water off that sill, soak it up super, super fast and then I just go over my thing if I'm outside and I squeeze it. It's back to being dry, I put it in my pouch. I don't have to burn through rubber if I'm using little channels. I don't have to worry about getting wet towels. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. What I do is I scrub my window. I squeegee my window. I pull out my uh, sponge. I always keep it on my left. Pull out my sponge. Hit the frame where all that water is just sitting there on the bottom. I squeeze it out. Put it back. Grab my towel. Detail the sides. And then detail the bottom. Super fast, super absorbent. I'm telling you, it is like a seven to fifteen dollar upgrade to have this dumb sponge, and it's so it's so good. It's so good. If you haven't checked it out, buy a sea sponge, put it in your next order. We have them, and try it out. It's just one of those weird things that shouldn't make sense or be as awesome as it is, and it really, really is. It's a sea sponge. Uh, one thing that people do use in uh, the olden days, why sea sponges were kind of around, was they would take that and that was their scrubber. So they'd dip that in their bucket and then they'd scrub the window because the texture on a sea sponge is pretty good for scrubbing. The problem is, it's so much better to have it on a T-bar. You can get wider strips. You're holding it like this as opposed to like this. You don't have that fatigue. So most people don't even think of sponges anymore. They just don't even have it. So buy a sponge, I'm telling you. Of all the tips and tricks, steel wool is one of them, sponges is another one. Uh, those are like tool-wise, some of the best things that I, I'm telling you. Dumb little things. By the way, if you have a list of better things or you think I'm an idiot, tell me down below in the comments on YouTube. Uh, I do want to start increasing comments. We're going into winter. A lot of us are bored. Hopefully your list helps somebody else out and uh, I love to just read and see interaction. So put that down below. If you use sea sponges, tell me that too. I think that's the Frank Rave thing. Everybody talks about Frank Rave using sponges, but anyway, enough about sponges. Um, another tip, uh, number five in our list of 10 and a half is uh, booties for ladders. Now, let me be clear that this has to be a uh, booty that is... Uh, um, uh, gosh... Not slip, slip resistant. Slip resistant booty. Now, if you're using booties in general, right after you use these disposable ones, you kind of tend to want to throw them away. But there's something that you can do that helps your ladder. With old booties, I always leave them so that when I have ladder with standoffs or your regular feet, 
When you go into a house, you always have dirty feet if you're using ladders on the exterior. Now, a lot of you say, well, I use water. Okay, great. If you use water fed and you never, ever, 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 ever touch a ladder, awesome. High five to you. You are absolutely amazing. If you're still using ladders, even if you're just using it on the inside and you don't want to track dirt or things from their, you know, whatever's into the house, what you do is on the feet of the ladder, you put a booty nice and tight so it doesn't roll around in the booty and then you throw a rubber band on that uh, or a strap if you have those removable uh, zip ties or something. So it's nice and tight on there. But then anything that's on those feet, dirt, wood chips, grass, dog poo, whatever is inside the booty. So using old booties on your ladder is a super killer trick. The big thing is you cannot have a booty be loose. If it's loose, your ladder will move inside there. And that's what you do not want because there's nothing worse than a ladder moving when you're on it. That will make for a butt puckering experience having that move. So make sure it's nice and tight. Like I said, I just use rubber bands. Um, I think one of them actually has uh, Velcro straps too. They're for like um, uh, extension wires, but you can kind of put it on. But just holding that nice and tight, it makes uh, basically a fresh thing for your ladder every time. So old booties that you maybe aren't reusing, throw it on there uh, and it saves you a bunch of headaches with dirt. Now, with that being said, I learned a valuable lesson. This is now probably 10 years ago. This was early, early on in my window cleaning uh, experience, if you will. But I had a ladder that I brought in, didn't even do, it was all water fed on the outside. I brought my ladder in to do the inside and they had these really nice like marbly floors and I thought, well, I'm not gonna put on the marbly floor. It's gonna move. Uh, one of my techs was coming in to hold it, but whatever, I put it on their rug that was right there. The rug uh, was like white and I didn't know that on the bottom of the ladder rung in um, on it was, um, it was some dog stuff from the job prior the last time we used the ladder so we're up there doing the job or whatever and come down and now i have stuff ground into this person's it's very expensive carpet and uh, i ended up having to have a carpet company that specialized in rugs clean the thing they had to like roll it up and take it to their facility to do yeah that uh was an extreme learning lesson because i spent almost to the penny what I made on that job to get this stupid rug cleaned. So yeah, don't do that. Don't be dumb like me. Learn from my mistakes. Uh, number four on the list of 10 and a half things uh, is a painter's hook. Now at Lowe's, Home Depot, any one of those places, you can get this thing in the painting section called a painter's hook. They're like $3 and it's this big like stainless steel hook that has a little chain section and a clip on the bottom. And what that is for is that you can hook a bucket, a five gallon bucket with just a metal style kind of handle. You clip it on that and now you can hang a bucket on your ladder rung. You can also use that clip to hang a bucket on a gutter. So when you're up there doing any type of gutter work, if you're scooping, bagging, removing, doing all that stuff, you're putting it into a five gallon bucket. Now you have that five gallon bucket up on the ladder with you and you're not worried about using one of your contact points aka your hand to hold the bucket you clip it on you do your work it's all right there and when you're done then you unclip it walk it back down the ladder now because it's just an open hook it's super easy you pick it up it's always on the handle all your buckets have it it makes it so your buckets can um, get uh, hung in your trucks or on your ladder racks when you're driving or however you want to do it super 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 valuable little uh, tip. Um, that is a $3 tip. So use that. It's called a painter's hook. It's in the painting section at Lowe's or Home Depot. Just go find it. Um, they're super valuable to throw on a five gallon bucket, especially for gutters, especially for gutters. By the way, gutters suck. So trying to make them any better is always best. Um, the number three item on our list of 10 and a half items that are tips, tricks, and hacks is uh is a toothbrush for tracks and uh this is one of those things that i still can't tell you how many people do tracks that try to wipe them out <clears throat> they try to wipe out tracks and and sills and everything 
And they're like, I just can't get it in there. I just can't. My finger can't. Now, there are track brushes. I really like the Maker, and I really like the Zero version, but a simple toothbrush works amazing. If you're at any flea market, I buy those big. They're like 10 of them, like all stuck to each other in a big like sheet. I buy them that way. Super, super cheap, and here's the trick with a toothbrush. The toothbrush handle and a standard handle uh, toothbrush fits in the squeegee part of your bucket on a belt. So in most buckets, you always have two or more squeegee parts that you would put your channel, and then you have the big one for the scrubber. I always have a toothbrush in the slot I'm not using on the channel. So I always have a toothbrush on me. It's always right there. And now I can go in there and scoop the dirt out of the corners into the center so I can get it out easier. I will toothbrush and vac a uh, uh, track. If you have a cordless vac, so easy, so fast. Do it all before it turns to mud. Once it's mud and you got the window wet, it's a pain in the butt. So do it while it's dirt and powder. Pull it out. A simple toothbrush. I'm telling you. Toothbrush works wonder. The other thing is with those toothbrushes, um, I will use them for when you have caked in dirt on the seal of a window. So where the frame touches the glass, there's a seal, kind of gets rubbery. Sometimes you get some algae or mold in there. Uh, sometimes you get really like caked on stuff. I'll take that toothbrush right in that thing and just up and down, side to side on that seal on the interior windows and boom, that's it. Super, super simple. You can carry it with you all the time and they're absolutely dirt cheap. Super dirt cheap. Uh, if you are in Alabama and you need to know what a toothbrush is, just send me a message. Ha! Look at that. Look at that. Toothbrush Alabama joke. Uh, no, I do actually love Alabama, by the way. I have tons of clients there. I would never talk bad about Alabama. <laughs> by the way, if you have any uh, angry uh, emails, send them to uh, jersey at windowcleaner.com. I'll be waiting for those. Uh, the next one, number two on the list of the top ten and a half things, tips and tricks of things that I pulled out of my head is the plastic gift card. Now, I know, I've beaten the horse with the plastic gift card a thousand, thousand times, but here's what I do with them that I love. Now, if you don't know the premise of a plastic gift card, it is basically a plastic card, looks like a gift card, for $50. I just have it. It looks like it. There's a $50 thing. There's even a credit card style number and a black strip on the back. I just print them that way uh, so it looks like a gift card. You're never going to have somebody use $25 or $50 or whatever the card amount is. That's it, right? It's always going towards a purchase. So you don't need to make that card stripe strip on the back active. But it does add some appeal to the card in my opinion. But what I do is I keep them on me. I have a business card holder. Uh, that I keep in my pocket at all times. And then I also have them in all the work trucks. There's a little bin with cards all over. Now, I do not have, mm, let me rephrase that. I do have business cards for the commercial side of things. Like for route, I always will give somebody a business card. But for houses, I don't almost never hand them out. What I do is somebody's like, oh, hey, excuse me, uh, do you have a card? I go, oh, yeah, let me go grab one. I'll pull it out of my pocket or I'll pull it out of the thing. And go, oh, you know what? I don't have a business card on me, but I'll do you one better. I have a gift card for $25 off or $50 off. And I give that to them. I said, well, you're new anyway. You might as well try us out, right? Now I hand them a gift card instead of a business card. All of my information's on there. My website, my phone number, all of that's on there. The pertinent information is on there. They get that and they go, whoa. I talked to this window cleaner on the street and he gave me a gift card instead of a business card. He didn't have them on there. I think, oh, I get it uh, probably 50% of the time. No, 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 no. I just, I, just a business card. I said, absolutely, don't worry about it. We have a ton of these gift cards. I would love for you to give us a shot. Here's just a little thank you. Right? Oh, sure. Are you sure? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Handing out a plastic gift card, but having it like a spur of the moment thing is awesome. It's not sales pitchy at all. People don't go, oh, this guy, he's trying to sell. It's not what it is. It's super, super convenient. It gets people to try you, and they'll use those gift cards. Remember, in your wallet right now, you have a gift card from somewhere. It's probably a Starbucks gift card or a McDonald's one with like $1.18 on it, but you won't throw it away because there's value to it. You won't throw it away. Plastic gift cards. But uh, if you have them already, use them that way. It's absolutely amazing. The number one 
this is my favorite. This is this is well, why it's number one. But uh, next to giving out plastic gift cards, which I've made more money handing a plastic gift card out like I just said, like an accident. Well, I don't have a business card, but I have this. I've made more money doing that than I have probably. I've never actually tracked it, but just in my brain. I would say, I would say out of every card I've ever handed out like that, I've probably had 95 plus percent of those people call me. It's absolutely an awesome trick. I digress. Number one on the list of the top 10.5 things is oil change sticker clings. Oil change window clings. You know the thing in your windshield that's a little oil change, right? And it says you need to change your oil at 30,212 miles. And it's got the name of the company with their phone number, right? What do we do as window cleaners? We want to do their job again. They'll call us, hey, I think it's time. How long? It's been two years since you've had it. Really? Yeah. People forget. So what we do is we print up clings. Now, by the way, if you're listening right now, don't call me because I've sold my business and I haven't ordered clings personally in probably four years. So can you get them anywhere online? Probably. I don't remember right where I get them from uh, or have gotten them from, but they're ridiculously cheap window clings even in general on that size and what i did was i had my name and my logo up on top of the cling below that i had my uh website and i had my phone number and then under that i had a whited out section right so it's white on the cling that had uh date of last service on there don't put the date of future service because you don't know that one but date of past or date of last service on there on the white, what I do is on with a marker, when we're prepping everything for the job, they're gonna get their envelope and everything else, I'm gonna take that marker, I'm gonna write today's date on that cling. When I'm done and doing everything, I take that window cling and I put it in their kitchen window. Now, if they don't have a window over their sink, which more and more people aren't, uh, I put it in a window that's super, super visible. Don't put it behind the couch in the living room, it doesn't make sense. Don't put it in the entranceway when people come in because they're going to look at it and go, oh, I don't need that. Up but put it somewhere that only the homeowner themselves kind of see that. And they have to be just looking out of a window. So I always try the kitchen window. If there's a kitchen patio door or something like that, I'll put it on that. And these things are amazing because what happens is they stay on there. When I get to the next job or I get back to there, they can see when the last service was they had. They'll always remember because they'll notice that stick. Oh, what the, oh, it's just a cling. Like they'll leave it up, but then when they have to think about windows again, they'll see that or remember it was there and then go over there to get your number. More calls will come from that than a business card. It's a window cling and they're super, super cheap. I'm talking about cents, under a dollar per cling. Way under a dollar, depending on where you get them. Uh, ridiculously cheap, and it reminds people. The other thing that's really, really nice is what happens when people, before they call us, what do they do? They stand there and they go, oh, man, our windows are, ugh. We got to get a window cleaner out. They look out the window. Well, if they look out and go, these windows are gross. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, we haven't had the windows done since last year. It prompts them. It prompts them, I'm telling you right now. Use that tip. It'll make you millions of millions of dollars over 30 years, maybe. No, it's really, really a good one, though. It's a good, good trick. Um, uh, the point five one, just for fun, keep a bottle of soap in your bucket, by the way. If you're using a rectangle bucket, keep a little squeeze bottle of Dawn in there. Or if you're using GG4 or whatever, keep it in there, throw it in the water. It's always there, but if you're on a job and your water gets so nasty, which it does sometimes, all you need to do is go anywhere to a garden hose, take that, dump it out, your bottle of soap comes out with it, you fill it with new water and you got fresh soap, put it in. It makes it just really, really easy to do. So hopefully you got something out of it. It's kind of a fun little episode. It's not so serious. I'm not talking about, you know, disease and famine in the world. But hopefully you got something. I hope you use this. Tell me if you did. Tell me if any of them were good uh, down below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening to this, more people listen than anything. But leave me a review on wherever you're li uh, listening. I know it's going to take you some time, so I do appreciate that. Uh, but jump on YouTube. Say what's up. Put a comment. I want lots and lots of comments. I want hundreds of comments. We always like average like 10 or 20 comments on YouTube, and I always want to boost that up. Ryan Fuster, he just gives me a thumbs up. But guess what? It helps for ranking and SEO and everything else. And then it's 
makes me feel good. It makes me feel good when people talk back. More importantly, if you want to buy your supplies through me, that would be absolutely the utmost of epicness. My number is 862 312 2026. 862 312 2026. Save that number in your phone as Jersey. I guarantee I'm the only Jersey you know. Um, and yeah, remember the sticker we had on the wall? I finally took it down. Uh, but the pole wraps. This is back. It is now official and on the site if you want uh, any of your water fed poles to look absolutely awesome. Go check that out. It is on windowcleaner.com or talk to me and I'll get you uh, one ordered. Super, super awesome. More importantly, uh, go out there, learn the tips, talk to me, order your supplies for me, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.